we're going to begin this video by looking at important stereochemical designators for the monosaccharides. Sugars generally contain a large number of stereocenters, and so they can have rather complex stereoisomeric relationships. But where we're going to focus first is on the differences between enantiomeric sugars in the way they're named and how we can recognize that they are enantiomers and think about naming the two different types of, of sugars. In a sort of classical organic chemistry context, we would use RS labels to designate the stereochemical configurations at all of the stereocenters in a sugar molecule. But that's a lot of RNSs flying around. For example, if you're talking about a hexose, which generally contains four stereocenters. And so to sort of shorten that down and for historical reasons, because the sugars were given names often before their stereochemical configurations were known, we often use the base name of the sugar to represent a particular diastereomer, particular relative configurations of the OH group, something like right, left, right, right, or left, right, left, left. Those relative relationships are encapsulated in a name like glucose. And what the designators we'll talk about here tell us is which enantiomer we're dealing with. The right, left, right, right, if you will, in the language of a Fischer projection, or the left, right, left, left, which as we'll see is the enantiomer of that first sugar, which we would call the L sugar. So how does this DL system work? Well, for sugars, it all starts with the triose glyceraldehyde arguably the simplest sugar, the simplest aldose. Glyceraldehyde is a chiral molecule. It's got a single stereocenter, and there are two enantiomers of this chiral molecule. The two Fischer projections are drawn for us here, and we can see that the difference is in the orientation of the OH group and the H at that central stereogenic carbon, which here I've started. So this is the lone stereocenter in the triose glyceraldehyde, and the two different configurations are in the Fischer projection, the OH pointing to the right and the H to the left, that's one enantiomer, and the OH pointing to the left and the H pointing to the right, that's the other enantiomer. Now, if we convert each of these into a line angle drawing, we get the picture that you see at the bottom. Here's deglyceraldehyde in a more kind of typical, at least for organic chemistry too, wedge dash drawing, and here's L-glyceraldehyde. And here again, we can see the difference at this key stereogenic carbon. The configuration at that carbon is different. Now, this stereoisomer, this enantiomer with the OH group pointing to the right at that stereogenic carbon in glyceraldehyde is called D-glyceraldehyde. And the enantiomer is in which that hydroxyl group points to the left is known as L-glyceraldehyde. This is just a convention. The way I always like to remember it is L to the left. So the hydroxyl group points to the left in the Fischer projection of L-glyceraldehyde. And in this Fischer projection, by convention, we put the aldehyde at the top. You'll notice this for pretty much all aldose Fischer projections that you come across. Now the beauty of this system is that we can extend it to enantiomeric sugars of any length. And the idea is, and as we'll see the reasons for this in a second, the idea is that to determine D or L for a given sugar of any size, we look at the bottommost stereocenter in the Fischer projection and whether the hydroxyl group linked to that bottommost stereocenter is pointing to the right, in which case we're dealing with a D sugar, or to the left, in which case we're dealing with an L sugar. And remember, the relative relationships of the other hydroxyl groups, well, that's all encoded in a name like fructose, glucose, mannose, galactose, etc. D and L tell us about enantiomeric relationships between sugars. So let's look at this at a, uh, invo involving a sugar that's bigger than glyceraldehyde to see how this system works. So first, let's start with this hexose sugar right here. It's a hexose one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, so it is a hexose. It's possible to degrade through a multi-step synthetic approach that we'll actually talk about later, this hexose back down to the triose glyceraldehyde. In essence, we kind of chew up one carbon at a time. And once we've chewed up all but the bottom three carbons here, we're left with glyceraldehyde. And when we do that with this sugar, we're left with L-glyceraldehyde, since this carbon corresponds to this carbon in the glyceraldehyde product of the degradation. 
Because that carbon has the L configuration in the glyceraldehyde derived from this hexose, this hexose is an L sugar. And specifically because of this left, right, left, left arrangement of the hydroxyl groups, this is L glucose. Now what about this hexose? Well, one thing we should notice right off the bat is that this structure is the enantiomer of L glucose. Check out the configurations of the four internal carbons in this hexose. They're exactly the opposite of the configurations in L glucose right, left, right, right. And that's exactly the opposite of left, right, left, left. So all four stereocenters differ in configuration between these two sugars. They are enantiomers. They're also mere images of each other and they're non-equivalent. And this is very easy to show looking at three-dimensional models. And so again, if we think about this same idea of degrading this six carbon hexo sugar down to a three carbon triose, that bottommost stereocenter is going to have a hydroxyl group that's pointing to the right. This degradation, in other words, would produce D-glyceraldehyde. This makes the original hexose a D-sugar, specifically D-glucose, with that OH group pointing to the right. And notice, again, L-glucose and D-glucose are enantiomers of one another. Diastereomeric sugars have entirely different names. For example, if we look at mannose here, mannose, this particular mannose, notice it's a D sugar. We look at that bottommost stereocenter, that stereocenter that would remain in glyceraldehyde after degradation of the sugar down to a triose. That hydroxyl group points to the right on the bottommost stereocenter. This is D mannose. But D mannose is a diastereomer of D-glucose. They're both hexo sugars. They have the same chemical formula. This is worth pausing and verifying, but they are not the same spatially and they are not mere images because they don't differ at all configurations. Notice that at carbon three, I've got the same configuration in D-mannose and D-glucose. So they differ only at some configurations and this makes them diastereomers. And again, generally, diastereomeric sugars will have entirely different names because they have very, very different properties due to the different spatial orientations of the hydroxyl groups. And so they were given unique names a long, long time ago when sugars were first uh, being studied.